Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman here taking a closer look at Friday's Stronach 5 sequence. We have a $100,000 guaranteed pool, three races at Laurel, two races at Gulfstream, low takeout, minimum wager for the Stronach 5, $1. We begin the sequence with race number eight at Laurel, five and a half furlongs on the dirt, a conditioned claiming event. This is the toughest race for me. I'm not going to give out a specific ticket. We're pre-scratches, we're pre-program changes, pre weather conditions, etc. But I would urge you to use the Ticketmaker application on drf.com where you can weigh your opinions and hopefully save a little bit more money than you would if you were playing a caveman ticket. Race number eight, I would use three A's and one C. Let's talk about the A's in program number order, beginning with the four, Zit Arosa, this horse five to one on the morning line, very lightly raced three-year-old going turf to dirt. And the last time this one went turf to dirt, he exploded, winning a $10,000 maiden claimer, going right to the front, never took any pressure, and dominated. Tried turf last time out, tried those tactics, had to go fast early, long turf stretch at Laurel probably worked against him. Zitarosa has some upside, and he's got some speed. I want to give him a chance here in the Stronach five. The number six, Rip Rap Riley, just makes a lot of sense. He's five to one on the morning line as well. Another horse going turf to dirt. I don't think he likes turf at all. And he's been facing better horses on the dirt. Two starts back, the three favorites ran one, two, three, and Rip Rap Riley just couldn't make up the ground. That race has already produced a couple of next out winners. He was three wide throughout. He tried hard in the stretch. He just couldn't finish behind those three favored runners. I think this is a very good spot for Rip Rap Riley, and his stalking ability gives him options. He can sit in the second flight if this pace is very fast. I use the nine for the greater good. Eight to one on the morning line is an A. You might want to consider him as a backup because he is one for 18 lifetime. He's another one going turf to dirt, another one that has run well going turf to dirt. And I think he has some sneaky good performances on the dirt that you might want to consider him in Friday's Stronach 5. Look at his seasonal debut, going turf to dirt, showing surprising speed at 56 to 1, and taking that field to inside the eighth pole before tiring. That race produced two next out winners. His most recent race on the dirty and break very well. Broke slow, got bumped coming out of the gate, ended up last down towards the rail. Don't really think that's his best running style. With the clean break, for the greater good, can be closer to the pace with this outside post. He can be in the clear. My backup is the three, King Darius. Well, I don't know what to make of King Darius who started his career, didn't do much in Southern California, went to the shelf for a long time, came back at parks, caught a sloppy track, and just dominated those horses, didn't change leads in the stretch, competitive enough buyer speed figure. I just wonder if he's going to face some heat in this spot. But he did win impressively last time out, and he does have a fig that puts him within hailing range of the top contenders in this race. He would be a deep backup for me. So my A's in leg number one are the four, six, and nine. My C would be the number three, free scratches and program changes. The second leg of the Stronach 5 is race number nine. It is a $25,000 maiden claimer. My lean in here is the three. Bourbon and Ice making his second lifetime start. He debuted for a $40,000 tag. He pressed a couple of horses while in between. I thought the rail was very good that day. He did not get to the inside, and the winner just ran off of the screen. Bourbon and Ice dropped towards the rail late tired. He drops a little bit in class here. I think he's just really going to improve second time out. And I think he's going to show big early speed. He's three to one on the morning line. And I prefer him over the morning line favorite, the one big boots who finished ahead of Bourbon and Ice last time out, but who's fairly well exposed after eight lifetime starts. Bourbon and Ice would be my lone A in the Stronach five. And I'm very tempted to single him as I think he will show normal second out improvement. I'll use big boots as a B, but this was disappointed last time out as the favorite. And again, he's had eight chances to break his maiden and hasn't done so yet. So I'm leaning on bourbon and ice. Deeper pocketed horse players might want to also use the one big boots. We'll move down to South Florida for leg three at Gulfstream Park. This is a one turn mile and it's a $6,250 beaten claimer. And a lot of folks are going to single the four slinging Sammy B coming off a 72 buyer effort last time out, winning very easily and then claimed by a barn that just does awesome work first time off of the claim. You look at the jockey Fanny Olson and you're like, who's Fanny Olson? Well, Fanny Olson's won some races 
races in Scandinavia in the past, and I think she's capable of getting a winner. Sling and Sammy B has speed in a race without much pace. It's a must-use for me at 9 to 5 on the morning line. I'll take him as an A. I'll take her as an A. I'll also take my Francesca, who is no match for a runaway winner and a very sharp one at that last time out, was claimed by Gilbert Zerpa, another one that wins at a very high percentage off of the claim. These are the two morning line favorites in this race. Um, they would be A's. A horse that I do want to use as a backup, a horse that I think is somewhat dangerous in here is the six, Bird of Peace stretching out. As I mentioned, there's not a lot of pace in this race. And if Olsen is patient with the four, Bird of Peace stretching out from five and a half to a mile might be able to make the front. This filly one last time out, coming from off the pace for a 6-2-5 tag. I don't know. I think Bird of Peace claimed by a very sharp trainer in Elizabeth Dobles, another high percentage off the claim trainer, is improving at the right time, is consistent, has hit the board in the last four starts. Maybe Bird of Peace is the price source you want to use as a backup in the Stronach 5. Six to one on the morning line for Bird of Peace. I use the three and four as A's and the six as a B in our third leg. Back to Laurel for the fourth leg of the Stronach 5, race number 10, one mile on the turf, optional claiming race. I want to use two A's and one B in program number order. The three Bandito, I think, is real sneaky. He's only raced once on the turf. That was two starts back. He was dismissed at 32 to 1, and he did a lot of dirty work pushing the pace throughout. He actually made the lead in the stretch and understandably got tired late. It was a sneaky good performance for Bandito, and if Bandito Dito can get to the lead in here, or at least be close. I think he's going to outrun his morning line of six to one. They ran him on dirt last time out. He was far from disgraced. But something tells me that Bandito's future lies on the turf. And I thought that race two starts back, a very underrated performance. Seville Barber, the eights, the other A I want to use, added Lasix last time out. Showed speed, really not much of an excuse. They weren't going very fast, but he showed renewed heart in the stretch to only be beaten the neck. Just seems like a nice fit at this level. And if he can improve off that 75 buyer, and there's no reason to think why he can't. He's only run six times in his career. I think Seville Barber fits right there. I also think they'll take him off the pace this time around. My B is the morning line favorite. The second uh, morning line favorite, pardon me, the two, Maryland Pride. Listen, Maryland Pride can win. He was the beaten favorite last time out. He's won for 14 lifetime. He hasn't won a race since 2017. He's 0 for 10 on turf. You're starting to get the picture. He's not the most reliable horse in the world, but he's earned three consecutive 77 buyer speed figures, and that number probably be good enough to put him right in the mix again. Couldn't find an excuse last time out when he was second best as the favorite. He's a horse that I would use as a backup. I don't really love him in here, but I do want to consider the three Bandito and the eight Seville Barber as A's. I won't let Maryland Pride knock me out, especially if I have a price in the other legs. I'll use him as a B. And we'll complete the wager with the fifth leg. Race number nine at Gulfstream. Five furlongs on the turf. $10,000. Non-winners are two life. I want to use two horses. One A, one B. Mr. Storm's my A. And you're going to look at Mr. Storm and say, Mr. Storm's your A? He's one for 11 lifetime. He's kind of an in and outer. I don't know. I thought he ran great last time out. He did the dirty work. He dueled the favorite right into the ground. He had the lead in the stretch, and he just got pipped in the wire. It was a classic situation of a horse that won the duel and lost the war. He's getting a rider switch from a 10-pound apprentice to a 17% jockey in Lionel Reyes. And Mr. Storm's just going to show good speed in this race. I trust him this time around. If they leave him alone, he'll be very tough to beat. Captain Ron will be my B. Very consistent. One is made in two starts back. Last time out in his first race against against winners, had to come three wide in the stretch as the beaten favorite, but I thought it was a rock-solid enough performance. They just look like the two strongest contenders in this race to me, but I like Mr. Storm's race last time out, and I'm hoping he can get to the front and take him wired a window. He's my A. The seven is a B for me. The Stronach 5 kicks off with Laurel Park's eighth race. Remember, a $100,000 guaranteed pool, low takeout, minimum wager, $1. Best of luck.